Uh, our next speaker here is Kevin Smith from Renaissance Oil Corp. Now, this company has the absolute largest catalyst in its being. In fact, the reason the company was formed was to test these upper Jurassic shales. Uh, we're very hopeful they're going to be quite virgin style pressures and flow rates, you know, hopefully some very big wells. And, and that catalyst is coming up. And, and this has been a long time coming. I've been with this company now. I, I, I was, kind of, was kind of surprised when I looked at my portfolio and, and the dates that I bought the stock. We bought, I bought this stock in 2014. It's highly unusual for me to own a stock for four years. <laughs> highly unusual. So, uh, and I, I really think that now, uh, happy to see, now that we're in a good oil market, happy to see how this big exploration uh, play, plays out in Mexico. So, Kevin, please come uh, and give us the update on, on what's happening. And after, so the break is at 11, but there will be coffee at the back that you can go to see here starting in about five minutes. Okay. Very simple. Forward and back. Forward and back, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Keith, for uh, hosting us uh, again. Like we have been doing his present uh, his, uh, conferences here since 2014 when the company was created. Uh, my name is Kevin Smith. I'm filling in for Craig Stanker, a CEO who had to be away in Mexico working on a very interesting deal. So, uh, and and that's kind of what's uh, uh, characteristic of Mexico right now. There's just a lot going on, and uh, so. So anyways, Renaissance Oil and Gas, I joined in 2014 when the company was formed. Uh, we're pure play for Mexico and we were put together specifically for Mexico as uh, Mexico has entered into this new energy reform and it's ended basically 76 years of monopoly that uh, Pemex has had. Uh, in that time, we've acquired a number of properties, uh, built up uh, the portfolio and, uh, and one of the biggest blocks that we, the biggest block that we've recently acquired last year is this Amata land block, and that puts us in this uh, partnership with uh, Luke Oil and Pemex, uh, two very large oil producers, both about do two million barrels a day, and and uh, we've taken over operatorship, uh, uh, developing that block now, and uh, we've been very active this year on it. Uh, and uh, as Keith mentioned, uh, we've identified a shale play on it, uh, the source rock for much of the conventional production in the area. Uh, and our estimates are about six billion barrels of oil in place. So it's this huge prize, uh, an untested shale play that's uh, basically uh, something we'll be targeting in 2018. In fact, we're looking at it right now. We'll be drilling it shortly. We have the, the service rig on site preparing the uh, location. And it's something that's, uh, you know, we've been waiting for quite some time. And, and it's, uh, it's been a, a bit of a... Uh, it's been quite a stretch to get to 2018 and putting the portfolio together and, and, and all of a sudden it's, we're finally very active in the field. And so we'll be uh, the first international company to, uh, to drilling a shale well in the country and uh, we think it's going to unlock a lot of value. Uh, we're currently at about uh, 1,650 BUE a day, uh, pretty modest start that puts us in the, uh, in the top five largest oil and gas producers in Mexico including Pemex. To, uh, it's, uh, it's an indication of how early it is. Uh, we raised some capital uh, here uh, earlier in the year, and so we're funded to $12.5 million. And that gets us right through our program at Amatitlan, uh, the drilling of the, the 12 wells we have uh, drilled to date, uh, plus the shale well. Uh, and so still early stage. Uh, we're, we're about 25 cents where we were in 2014, so the stock really hasn't moved. In that time, of course, we've come out of a nuclear winter for oil prices, so uh, the commodity price is working in our favor now. Um, why Mexico? Um, it is a unique opportunity. I spent, prior to joining Renaissance, I spent the last 15 years in Calgary investment banking, and, uh, and you know, I basically it was uh, a, good, uh, a good career path, and then finally I got a knock at the door from one of my former clients, and, and he outlined the opportunity that was Mexico. And, and it's, it's a, you know, I don't know, hopefully it's a once or twice in a lifetime opportunity where a country this close with such rich oil resources that's been, you know, sheltered from capitalism and, and entrepreneurism for, you know, three quarters of a century. 
and, uh, and that's just ended. And, and also, while the rest of the world has been going after the unconventional and using the new techniques and completions and drilling to get after you know, tighter, more difficult reservoirs and uh, formations onshore, Mexico has basically focused all of its uh, time on offshore, and it's been you know, fairly successful. You know, at one time, Mexico was the second largest producer of oil, uh, kind of 100 years ago, and they've slowly grown that up to three and a half million barrels a day, mostly in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, the, the Cantarell field and the offshore field uh, were, were, were very, uh, very generous and, and produced a lot of gains, but the, the country had declines, and the three and a half million barrels a day is now sitting about two million barrels a day, and so they opened the door to, uh, to foreign capital, and, th and that's when uh, we basically put ourselves together as a pure play company to go after this. And what that means is there is just a massive amount of deal flow. Uh, we had, we've seen lots of properties come to market that are either coming from the government or Pemex themselves looking for partners. Just recently on, on April 27th, the most ambitious farm oil program happened from Pemex where 23 blocks have now come to market with 30,000 barrels a day of production and 150 MCF of gas. And, and this is, you know, there, there's opportunities like this where, you know, and there's, there's not a lot of, you know, uh, competitors in country yet, but that'll change. Uh, and we certainly put ourselves to have a foothold in this. And, and we just think it's an excellent environment to grow an aggressive junior oil and gas company. Um, so the block that we acquired that we partnered with Pemex and Luke Oil is the Matted Land Block. And it sits right in the heart of the, you know, one of the, the largest basins, the Tampico Masatla Basin in, in Mexico. And, and just last year, IHS came out and, and labeled it a, a super basin, one of the 24 super basins globally. And I mean, the criteria for that is having produced 5 billion BOE and at least have another 5 billion BOE uh, left to be recovered and uh, multiple source rocks and multiple formations and, you know, and they've likened it to, to the Permian and we're fine with that. But, it, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a prolific basin in its history and we think it's got a lot of future ahead of it. And as far as the information from the, the, national, uh, the national archives in terms of uh, resources in place, there's about 35 billion BOE in perspective unconventional resources. And there's been no unconventional resource plays to date in Mexico. So it's all untouched. We're starting to see a lot of uh, larger companies positioning themselves. We came in early, relatively early, in the process and tied up a mat of land that we believe is right in the heart of the Tampico Masantla Basin. And uh, uh, we'll talk more on that. So um, a little bit about the Upper Jurassic Shales. Um, you know, Sophisticated audience here, obviously in Calgary, first time we've done this presentation in Calgary and normally I need to explain what a source rock is, but obviously, you know, that's been where, you know, after the wildcatters of Texas have, you know, made a lot of conventional discoveries, you know, they've, they've gone after the source rock, the tighter, uh, you know, which, which recently was very hard to complete and, and make produce. And, and so Upper Jurassic has been the major source rock for just uh, basically the oil and gas industry. And, and Sarah Azul 4 uh, was a well uh, some time ago, but uh, a huge 250,000 barrels a day, largest well ever. Uh, and it's, uh, it's in, in the Tampico Masantla Basin, source from the Upper Jurassic Shales. Uh, Cantarell, the, the largest offshore oil field in the history of over 2 million barrels a day of peak production, uh, all comes from this uh, really thick Upper Jurassic uh, uh, deposition and uh, and we think in matted land uh, for a number of reasons I'll show you is is right in the heart of this. Um, so at matted land itself, uh, sixty thousand acres. Uh, it's a you know it's an opportunity you only get in 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 some, a new country like Mexico to have a block that large. Uh, we're also surrounded by other blocks that we think there was a chance to consolidate and you know we're really looking to. Uh, uh, gather up as much land as we can ahead of the shale play, I think, advancing. And I think will be a big reason why we think it'll be advancing with our appraisal well coming this year. Uh, we're targeting a horizontal well. We'll probably be drilling that starting this summer. Uh, and uh, we'll probably have results late Q3 into Q4 in terms of a, a production test to do proof of concept that uh, the shales do produce. 
Uh, to the north of us, more in the gas window, there's been a couple of wells that Pemex has drilled that have had uh, test rates in the 10 million cubic feet a day range. So th we know that the reservoir is, is charged and, uh, and, and we believe that we're more in the light oil condensate, a little bit less thermally mature window. And, and uh, I'll talk a little bit of how we got to that. Um, we've been drilling into the shallower Chicontepec formation as basically part of our farm in with Pemex. Uh, we're now on to uh, well number 11. Um, high hopes for the Chicontepec. Uh, uh, Pemex has 4.2 billion barrels in place uh, on our block at Matat land and I think the recoveries are somewhere around 40 million barrels. Um, that, that might be a bit aggressive uh, and we'll see what we'll, we'll do. We are developing it and, and learning about it. Uh, we're trying new fracture techniques and uh, multi-pad drilling to get the cost down and, and so we're having good success. Our first well came in at 250 barrels a day which was fantastic. We've had some that were quite a bit less than that and, and on program you know, we're assessing that. But really our focus has been uh, on, on commercializing the shales. And, uh, so um, the, sh the Upper Jurassic Shales, there's been many uh, uh, wells that have traveled through it. Uh, on our block, there's been four wells that, uh, that have gone through this formation and gathered cores, uh, and then and 20 other wells in the area. So we've had access to lots of data to understand that it is very thick. Uh, it's got a high TOC. Uh, we've uh, done some three, 3D imaging. Uh, our chief geochemist, uh, Dan Jarvie, was one of the first foreigners to ever go into the core uh, depositories, you know, in local uh, Poza Rica, Mexico, and able to bring these samples back and do modern testing uh, in the labs in Houston. And so, uh, you know, yes, it's exploratory, and, and, and yes, it comes with risk, but the idea of the shales and the thermal maturity, uh, we have a very good idea of that if that it's homogeneous throughout our very our block and, and quite thick. So we've done a lot of work in terms of the homework on it and, and where we're landing our first well. Uh, but, you know, proof is always in the pudding. Uh, and, it, you know, and that's why we're, we're looking to do a, a, a shale test uh, this year. So the comparisons, as Dan Jarvie says, very similar to the, the Eagleford shale in South Texas. Uh, it's uh, a carb high carbonate. Uh, and it's very similar in, in, in the mineralogy uh, and, uh, and TOC. It's very similar depth, overpressured. I mean, the main difference is that uh, the upper Jurassic shales is about a little over three times as thick. You know, it has a similar resource concentration, and, and so what that really does is it really drives the, the resource in place per acre. Um, and like we said, you know, if we get to somewhere around, you know, the, the recovery is in the hundreds of millions of barrels is what we're targeting. So it's a huge prize. You know, the value of the block uh, on full development, we expect to be in, in the billions of dollars. So it's a, it's a big prize and, and it's a, a big challenge for a small company like ourselves, but I'll talk a little bit about the people that we've uh, taken on the team to, to tackle this challenge. Um, this is, you probably can't see this and if you want to, you can, uh, our presentations online, but the chart that uh, uh, Dan had put together in terms of just a comparison of the upper Jurassic shales to some major shale plays, a little bit more mature, uh, and and most of you know the uh, the the it, it's it's a marine sh uh, carbonate deposition. We think it's going to be quite clastic and brittle, taken to a frac, high carbonate content, uh, high TOC, uh, and overpressured. And, and quite thick. And so when we put it in terms of uh, resource concentration and the hybrid carbon you know, generation potential uh, by area uh, per section, you know, it ranks quite favorably to the uh, rest of the major plays. And so, I mean, it's early days. A lot of people have not heard about this, uh, this play yet, and we think it'll be breaking open uh, this year. Pemex is also drilling a couple of wells, and so those are uh, basically will be coming out as well. So I think our ability to keep you know, this quiet uh, is probably uh, uh, short-lived here, coming this year. Um, the, one of the wells uh, to the south of us 
was the Coralio 57 well. It's this blue curve on the bottom of 2000, 2014. Uh, so there was a test well into it. It, uh, it IP'd about 650 barrels. We think it was more in the black oil window. Uh, we're looking for more of, uh, of the, the volatile oil um, charged with gas for the higher deliverabilities. And so we think that, you know, within, within program, you know, that these wells will be IPing over 1,000 barrels a day um, and uh, recovering a million barrels of oil. Uh, is, our, is our type curve that our, our geoscientists have put together. And it likens very similar to uh, the Eagleford or our original wells. Well, the original wells were well below 600 in Eagleford, and, and EOG has recently been getting over 1,300 uh, barrels a day on, on their laterals. And so we hope that over time, the Upper Jurassic and Mexico will follow the same, uh, same curve uh, in terms of you know, increasing production. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a huge play uh, on our block and all around us. Um, so uh, we kicked off our drilling um, in December of last year. Uh, we've, we've now drilled the initial 10 wells that we were, was the original program. We've increased that to uh, add another four wells in Chicontepec. Uh, Pemex has said that uh, we are the most efficient operator in the basin right now. Not a lot of competition, but uh, we've been able to get the well uh, uh, from uh, spud to release down to 12 days. Uh, I'm really trying to, you know, attack the, the cost structure. That's something that Pemex was never really that good at, uh, keeping their costs down and a large organization. So, so that's been working out very well. Uh, we've placed six of these wells onto production. The rest of them are in various stages of being uh, fracked and, uh, and, and uh, we've been recovering the flak fluid and the water. And so we're gonna put these together in a bundle and, and we'll have some, an idea of you know, what we think from this appraisal plan going forward. Uh, Pemex, you know, they have on the book you know, 2,400 locations for Chicontepec on this block, so there's lots of running room. Um, you know, we're weighing that off against uh, the shales and of course with a shale well, being completed this year, we'll have a lot of evidence of where we'll be directing our capital towards in, in the next year. Um, this, just for you know, people that have uh, generalists that don't understand the, the oil and gas injury as much, but you know, when we initially came in, we acquired our stake, which is a 25% stake in the contractor's share. Uh, of, of matted land and we we're roughly $150 per acre if you look at what the acquisition cost was. Uh, we're very much on the low end of the scale in the early entry. Uh, we're dealing with old logs and some regional geology. We've recovered some, some, uh, you know, some cores and we started to do our own work but we're really within the kind of the first couple stages here. And what we've seen in the Permian and, and Marcellus and all the other basins as they become proved up obviously there's a massive uh, shift in value on a per acre basis and obviously some of the comps in the Permian now are going for $60,000 uh, an acre, not something you're necessarily going to see in Mexico, uh, but with a discount, you know, the, the right scale uh, is basically in, um, in millions of dollars in terms of what the value of the land is. We're targeting to have, uh, you know, basically a third to 50% of the block by the time it's done. Uh, and so, I mean, that to us, you know, it, it could be worth over a billion dollars to our company. It's uh, very impactful, um, and uh, and you know, and, and that's where on the tr we're on the path to uh, make proof of concept and start the commercialization of this, and you know, something that it's easy easier to do for a smaller new entrants and, and tie up as much land as possible in this play. Um, so, speaking about our production, uh, we were awarded these three producing blocks in 2015. Uh, they came with about 1,650 barrels a day of production, which is about what they're doing today. We see no declines on it, and Spruill, our evaluator, basically just gave us back the same reserves again, because we've had no decline, so we had a positive revision upwards about of what we produced last year. Um, it, it's a, a solid base. We'll be drilling uh, probably three to four wells here, um, coming this year. One of the wells that we're producing in the 
northern field, Munden to Wayville, they're doing about 200 barrels a day uh, with some gas. I mean, the well originally came on at 5,000 barrels a day. So there's pretty prolific wells that have come out of this area. Uh, we think we've, we, there's, there's modern 3D seismic over it. We've identified our locations and we're, 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 we're just uh, allocating the contract to rig operators now. And, uh, and we'll be looking to, we'll probably, we, we expect we'll probably take the 1650 and, and likely triple that production this year. Um, the key to this is uh, it, it, it's infrastructure is all through the block. We've got pipelines that take us to market. We sell our product to Pemex. We get a pretty good price for it. Uh, we're about 60% gas. Um, and in Q1, our average gas price here per MCF was a little over $4.90. So it's a decent place to be producing gas. Oil obviously drives the economics here. Um, and, and as a result, uh, you know, we have no on-site separation or lifting costs. We keep our operating costs quite low. And for 2017, our first full year of operations, we were $3.19 per BOE op cost. Um, so that leaves, that leaves a decent margin. We have a decent uh, uh, royalty to the state. Uh, but still, it's positive netbacks, and, uh, and we're doing quite well. It gives us free cash flow. So it's been quite good to get us into country and learning how to operate. And the sea of blue that is around us, those are all the Pemex blocks. And so, and much like our blocks, they've been left fallow for, since the 80s when they were first discovered. All the capital went offshore. So there's been no development in this area. There's, I mean, we call them mature fields. We call them neglected fields. Uh, and, and on April 27th, Everything in blue just went to market. So they're all being farmed out, these fields and all around us. And so in this area, by far, we're the largest independent operator because we're, you know, there's a couple of pink blocks down there, but they don't have any production. And uh, so, so we've had, uh, and some of these are pretty huge, huge, uh, huge opportunities and some of them smaller. So October 31st is the auction for these. You know, we think there's a, a you know, a couple of, company makers within there. Of course, we'd have to win at auction, so we're not talking too much about it, but it's, it's, it's great evidence of all the deal flow in this country and, and, uh, and, and the ability to grow and apply capital. We've been very lucky that, you know, throughout this whole uh, downturn in oil, uh, we've got some pretty connected shareholders and, and a board, and we've always been able to raise capital. And, and I think, you know, if, if there's a huge opportunity, you know, that I think that there's a chance for us to, to bring to bear private capital, which is just something that doesn't exist in Mexico. It's all uh, old money and, uh, and family money, multi-generational money, so, uh, and, and which knows nothing about oil and gas. So um, uh, this, is, this is the kind of the baseline. So we've got some great uh, organic growth to come through the drill bit, and really at the same time, we're advancing the, the proof of concept of the shale play. Um, so the shale team, uh, to put the group together, uh, Dan Jarvie, who worked with Craig Stanky, our CEO in a, private, in a prior company, uh, was called Realm Energy uh, International. Uh, and they used to be my client, was an investment banker. Great story, it went from 10 cents to, and finally, uh, in a couple of years, they gathered shale properties across Europe and ended up selling out uh, for over a dollar. And it made huge returns for my shareholders and my clients, and we got great fees as a banker, and it was a great success story. So Dan Jarvie, uh, upon finishing uh, that stint at Realm Energy International, uh, went to become the chief geochemist at EOG Resources, uh, the largest uh, unconventional oil producer in the world. And so uh, looked at uh, projects all over the world, rocks all over the world. Uh, of course, they're, they're, the big play they have is the Eagleford, and, uh, and so brings a, a massive amount of credibility uh, when we're dealing with other operators and other landholders in the in the in the country, that uh, that when he's mapped out the petroleum system in the Tampico Masantla Basin, that it's that it, it's a, you know one of the best in the world that's done this, and and so he worked with a group that was at Mitchell Energy uh, that uh, in back in the 90s when they cracked the code for the Barnett Shale. So this was the team that basically kept at it, kept at it until they finally figured out how to produce from shales. And, and Nick Steinsberger, uh, drilling completion engineer for us, he, he invented or came up with a slick water frack and uh, has gone on to drill, you know, 
12, 1300 shale wells. And so he's designing our well program uh, in Mexico and brings a wealth of knowledge. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, Dan Stewart and Kent Bowker, who were the geologists uh, with Mitchell in mapping it and uh, uh, as well are, are as part of our team. So and, you know, Mitchell was a great success story for George Mitchell, sold for over $3 billion to Devon. Uh, and so this is the team that's been working with us for the past couple of years, you know, pointing, pointing us in the right direction and, and making, you know, basically telling us you have to acquire a mapped land and you should probably take a good look at your neighbors. Um, Ian Telfer is our lead director. A big reason why we raise capital. He's got great connections on Wall Street. He was the founder and past president of Gold Corp. Uh, built that business in Mexico by acquiring the four largest mines in Mexico and Gold Corp is the largest producer in Mexico. And so when the time came that uh, oil and gas was opening up, uh, Ian was actually partners with Craig on Realm Energy International, the previous company. So they got together and said, we have to get into Mexico because this is going to be the biggest opportunity in the next 10 years. And so, and then, of course, uh, convinced me to join. Uh, and it's, you know, we've, we've built a company around it since then. Gord Keep, uh, Fiore, he's a director. Um, he makes my investment banking career uh, look quite small to considering how uh, successful he was at it. Uh, and he's a guru of, corp of uh, corporate governance and, uh, and, and basically runs our, the, uh, the, the corporate side of, of our, our listing on the, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Excander Malaki just joined our company. Uh, he was at one time largest shareholder of Tello Oil. It worked out very well for him. Uh, he's been part of many oil and gas companies. He just joined us in December. Uh, he is... Uh, a uh, terrific entrepreneur and has uh, uh, massive connections uh, globally and right into Mexico and, and he's been a, a great addition for us uh, recently. So, uh, management team, we talked most about that. So anyways, to wrap it up, you know, Tampico Masantla is now open for outside investment. We're one of the first peoples in there. Uh, we, th we think this is an area that's going to explode. We're hopefully growing in there, but we've already captured uh, you know, an interest in 60,000 acres, uh, and, uh, and we think that there's huge oil in place. Um, we're gonna, it's going to be competitive, but we have, you know, probably a leg up that with, our, with the drilling that we'll be doing ahead of new entrants, you know, I think that we'll have a, a good chance to expand our property. And if we don't, we have already a company maker within the portfolio. Um, and, of course, we'll be growing our assets in the Chiapas, the southern region, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, we think that Mexico is the place to be for years. And uh, we, we have an objective of maybe not being the next gold corp of oil and gas, but we certainly have some high aspirations in terms of what we're going to turn this company into. Thank you. Uh, the depth to, to the bottom of the shales is about 4,500 meters and it'll be about $14 million. And so about US, and that's three and a half million net to Renaissance, because we're 25% of it. And so that's, we're funded for that uh, through our last fundraising effort. So it's, uh, uh, the horizontal is, is looking at about uh, 4,000 feet and it'll be multi-stage fracked, um, and uh, so I mean, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know how many stages we're gonna do. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but I think it's it's not gonna be huge. It's not gonna be, you know, 30 stages. We're gonna probably try and learn as much as we can from it. Uh, but you know, we're looking at a test rate. You know, I done, Nick told me, I asked Nick yesterday. I said like, what what's a good well? Like, and he's like, like it has to be over. We're gonna beat the Coralio 157, so we'll be north of six or 700 barrels a day. We'll, you know, might not get to 1,000 barrels on the first one, but I mean, that's where we're looking to get to. Sorry, how long? How long, to drill, uh, it's probably about 60 days. So it'll. How, how long? Yeah, we, we believe so. I mean, we have, we have, uh, we have logs and and 
and cores from the, from the corners of the block, and, and we believe it runs right through us, right through our neighbor to the south and to the neighbor to the north, and so we, we think it's pretty homogeneous. The thickness changes, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it gets a bit gassier the further west you go, and it gets a bit oilier the further east we go, but we think a lands right in the sweet spot. I think it's also worth pointing out, too, I forgot to mention this, but, you know, we have the option to increase our stake in, in so th I'm going to say like in the operator share. We own 25% of the operator share, which is us and, uh, and uh, uh, Luke Oil. And we have the ability to increase that through an option post the drilling of these wells to 62.5%. So it, it, it's quite a good chance to, to ramp up our ownership upon success, of course, too. Guys, I'm going to stop it there just to keep on time, but Kevin, Thanks, Keith.